Okay, this is just going to be a short test of the Millermatic 211. This is a continuation of the unboxing. This is the front cover. So you have a control for your wire speed here. You can go anywhere between 10 and 100. When you do that manually, the higher the number, the faster the wire comes out of the end of the MIG gun. Um, if you go with the auto set function, which this has, you can either do it when you're running an 030 wire or an 035 solid core wire. Down here you have your voltage selection and it's pretty user friendly. You just put the setting on the thickness of the metal that you're welding. So we've got 0 .023 wire inside of this and I'll show you the wire. And um, the wire is mounted there. That's a counterclockwise rotation nut that holds the spool in place. Now, when you change wire sizes, like from 0 0.023 to 0 0.030, the way you do that is you pull this lever down, your roller goes up, and this, you push and you turn. It has two grooves on it. One of the grooves is for 023 wire, the other one is for 030. And the way you can tell is just to look at this, and you can see it says 0 0.024. 0 0.024 and 023 use the same um, spool. And on this side, you're running 030 or 035. So we're running 0 0.023. We put it on the 024 setting, insert it like that. The wire is on the appropriate groove. We push our tensioner down. There's where your gas comes in, your core shielding core. If you're going to run a flux core wire, then you're probably going to run an 030 flux core. You would adjust this polarity and just reverse these two leads. That's all you'd have to do to run the 030 flux core. Up here, we have the um, multi voltage plug. This is a 230 volt plug, so you take the 110 plug off of this and then you screw that 230 volt in and you can plug it into 230 volts. So this is the cart that I made. It was one of my projects. It's got the cord or the um, torch holder on one side. I have a ground clamp right down here on the bottom. Now the ground clamp is on bare metal. The entire cart is actually provides the ground for my work. The big wheel that you see there is another project of mine. That was a uh, bender. So that has nothing to do with the welding outfit. I've got my tank and it's strapped here for safety. This is a shielding gas. It's the mix. The uh, 7525 argon CO2. 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. So here's your gauges. Your gauges have a hose. The hose goes down and connects right below the power slash circuit breaker. And that fat cord that you see on the bottom, that's the power cord. And it comes up, I've got it up here. It's now set for 110 volts. So we'll be welding on 110 volts, 0 0.023. And first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a piece of scrap metal right here. And I'm just gonna run some beads across here so you can see what it's like. And we're gonna be putting the camera underneath the welding helmet. So it'll get dark for a little bit and then you'll be able to see the arc. Okay, this right here is the uh, setting for the gas. This is Smith regulator. And right now we're going to turn it on. It's set at about 17 psi. You're going to be somewhere between 15 and probably 25 um, on that regulator. I'm indoors or, or roughly, I'm in the garage, so there's no breeze or anything to blow my gas, my shielding gas. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my torch and I'm going to unwind it and then I'm going to turn the unit on. I've got the unit set for um, 3 16 inch thickness material. I have it at about a 50 inches per second wire speed and you can adjust the wire speed, you'll get used to it. But it's whatever speed that you um, think you need and you can tell because when you're Welding, what will happen is the welder will spatter and if you're getting like an intermittent spatter that should tell you that your your wire is probably 
not feeding at the proper speed. So we're going to turn the welder on and then we're going to run a bead. So. Okay, so we have our scrap piece of metal. It's on my metal table. This entire table is, is grounded. So anything that I lay on here, all I have to do is hit my torch and it'll start welding. Um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna run a little test beat. This wire is sticking out probably a little bit far, but you'll get used to it. It's really not necessary to trim it or anything. So here we're gonna run a bead. And that's the way this welder works. This is not on the auto set function. And when I did this bead, I did it. Um, when I did this bead, this was done uh, on a manual mode and not on the auto set mode. And the, when I welded, I don't know if you could see that on the video, but I did small circles. You can either do circles, some people do C's and they go back and forth kind of like a, a wave. Um, you'll get used to it. It takes a lot of practice to get a good bead, but welding with a MIG is pretty easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one more little bead here so you can see that. And this one's just going to be in a straight line. Okay. And you can see that that bead is a lot smoother. Now the bead is kind of laying on top of the metal and I, again I'm using 023 on 316s which you probably wouldn't do. If you're going to be welding 316s or thicker steel you're probably going to use an 030 wire. But this is just practice to show you that what a smooth clean bead looks like. And this welder does a really really nice job. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a couple of pieces of real thin gauge metal on here. It's very thin, um, probably 330 seconds. So I'm going to turn my wire speed down probably to about 40 and I'll go down to that's probably maybe 18 gauge. So I'm going to go down to 18 gauge. What I'll do initially is I'm going to start with a tack weld on each side. Now, now you can see on the welder on the MIG gun here that my wire is sticking out way too far, so I'm going to clip that because I'm working on this real thin gauge. I don't want to have a big piece of wire hanging out when I first start. I'm going to tack it on the front side, I'm going to tack it on the back side, and then I will weld these two pieces together and show you what it looks like. So here's the tack. Okay, that didn't work out. Now the reason it's having a different uh, difficulty striking arc is because although my entire table is grounded, the metal isn't ground clean. I only ground it around the area where I'm going to weld it. So it's having a little difficulty uh, completing that circuit. So let me see if I can get it to do it now. Now, all right, I'm going to have to grind this steel to give it a good connection. So we can, we're going to cut now, we'll come back in a minute. Okay, now I've ground the back side of both of these pieces of metal and this should tack pretty easily. There's one. There's two. And again, this is pretty thin gauge metal, but I'm just doing it to show you how it can weld. And you can see the penetration looks, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to weld. What I do on the thinner gauge metal is rather than just holding the button and shooting a bead across here, um, if you pulse it, you get a much, much uh, more controlled and um, easier to weld, it's easier to weld on the thin gauge metal because you don't blow a hole by developing too much heat in the metal and melting it through. So let me go ahead, I'm going to run a bead across here. And you can hear the difference between the bead that I ran and when it ran into paint. It started spattering and sputtering. That tells you that uh, it's not making a good arc connection. So what you end up with is you end up with um, burning paint and then that inconsistent bead. Take it up. And then um, the bead itself, 
I'm just cleaning this because it has paint on it and you can see there's that. If I were going to be running on this metal, I would probably reduce the speed of the wire because it's really feeding too much wire. And this is the back side of it. And you can see in the center there it got real good penetration. Um, that's probably a strong weld for like floor pans and things like that. Um, I don't think this thing is going to be coming apart anytime soon. But uh, that's the Miller 211 and it's got a great bead and it's, it also has a feature on here that's called smooth start for the arcing and uh, it kind of reduces that initial arc so you don't get a big spatter. It's more controlled on that first arc. But um, it's a good welder. Thanks for watching.